Okay, so take five seconds to pause the video, read the question, and then we will go through the answer. Okay, so we have a 25 year old female. She's coming in with shortness of breath and palpitations, and it looks like she was uh, just walking her dog. She felt suddenly felt lightheaded and short of breath. No family history of heart disease, and she has an irregularly irregular heart rate of 134, which is pretty significantly elevated. If we look here, we can see um, in lead two, look at this irregular spacing between the QRS complexes. Okay, this is very classic for atrial fibrillation. It's also, you know, we don't really see any P waves here either. Okay, so no discernible P waves, okay, in most of these leads. But we can also see blood pressure is mod modestly elevated. I mean, especially for a 25 year old. Um, she has fine tremors, and the EKG is shown. Initial labs reveal significantly elevated TSH, and this is very classic. 25 years old, you know, 20 to 30 is a, is a big age range in women for Graves' disease. So, which of the following locations is likely a source of aberrant electrical foci contributing to the patient's symptoms? So, another thing I want to say really quickly: if we have hyperthyroidism, usually what happens is you're going to have very high levels of um, your catecholamines, your sympathetic nervous system is going to be upregulated, right? And so the concept here is because of that, this can predispose these patients to developing atrial fibrillation. Okay, it's actually a uh, very clear association with atrial fibrillation and uh, hyperthyroidism. So I forgot to click to the next slide, so I'm leaving you guys in suspense here. So let's just skip to the next slide and just see what the answer is, and we'll go through the options here. So the first option, A, the cavotricuspid isthmus. So this is kind of a complex name. Usually when you get these weirder terms, they're usually not the right answer in board questions. What they're really talking about here is the cava is referring to the inferior vena cava, tricuspid referring to the tricuspid area or the tricuspid valve, and this is all in the right atrium. So this is very classic for the area that we would do ablations for atrial flutter. Okay, and again, we don't have atrial flutter here. We don't have our sawtooth pattern. Instead, we're dealing with atrial fibrillation. Okay, so this would not be the right answer. B, superior subendocardial right atrium. This is gonna be the location of the SA node. Okay, but we're not ablating the SA node, right? That's not the problem here. Again, we wanna to get to the left atrium, the pulmonary vein ostea, which is E here, so we'll just skip to E. So remember, for atrial fibrillation, we wanna to target the pulmonary vein ostea. Let's just go through the other options, though. So membranous portion of the interventricular septum, What's located in this area? This is going to be the bundle of his. It's also the location that we'll have defects in for VSDs. Left posterior atrioventricular groove. Remember, this is the groove that the coronary sinus is going to be running through. Okay, classically, this will be dilated. We'll have a dilated coronary sinus in any condition that increases the right atrial pressure. Okay, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but just think about why that is, right? If I have an increase in right atrial pressure, let's say that I have pulmonary hypertension. And when I have pulmonary hypertension, that pressure is going to prevent blood from moving into the pulmonary artery. So there it's gonna back up into the right ventricle, back up into the right atrium. And what happens? That right atrial pressure is gonna go up. And then remember, my coronary sinus is going right into the right atrium. If my right atrial pressures get really high, all of that blood that was supposed to go into the right atrium, it's not gonna be able to get there very easily because the pressure is so high, this blood's gonna get back up, backed up and the coronary sinus will get engorged. And all that engorgement is gonna occur in the coronary sinus running along the left posterior atrioventricular groove. And like I said, it can happen with anything that has elevated right atrial pressures. If you have tricuspid regurgitation, tricuspid stenosis, that can also do it. Finally, F, pulmonary artery, root of right ventricle. So this is the area that we can run that Swan-Gans catheter. Okay, so we can run a Swan-Gans catheter here, get the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, but again, this is not the area we would be ablating.